this engine building part eight, I think. Eight? Don't know, I lost count now. Anyway, since we last spoke, this engine's been taken apart. It's all been rewashed again. Um, all the gallery plugs have been removed. We've blasted air through. We've blasted a lot of cleaning plug, um, fluids through it just to sort of get any possible contamination out of the block, out of the crank. Um, and then everything's been popped back in. So the pistons all gone back in the same cylinders, the cranks in. All the bolts are currently just finger tight. Um, what I'm going to do is just show you some of the silicon on this end um, and then go through the torque sequence of torquing all the crank bolts. So just like we did earlier on the previous videos, we follow the torque sequence. So there's a pattern to follow and there's also several steps to torque on the crank and then also torque up the rod bolts as well. I'm not going to show you the entire process because we've already been through it and it's just going to make the video longer. Um, but basically this is where we're at. So the engine has been completely apart. The oil squirters are in. Got to make sure you put your oil squirters in if you haven't done already because otherwise you're not going to be able to put them the cranks in because it's just impossible to get to it. So make sure anything like oil squirters are in. Make sure that you've cleaned everything. Make sure your crank's in. Make sure your rods are all in. And once you torque it up and, you, and so on, just make sure it's all still free to move. So put your end bolt in and just turn the engine over. Make sure it's all smooth after you've torqued it up. Make sure everything feels good. Once we're happy, everything's torqued up and it's all clean and it's all in there, we're going to install the bottom end. Um, so we need to do a girdle and there's a windage tray. There's the oil pickup. There's the sumps, which are two parts in this one. Um, there's the oil pump on this side. And once we're happy that this bottom end of the engine's uh, sealed up, we have to turn it over. And then the head has to go on and the head has to be torqued down. Um, and then we need to put things like the rocker covers on the stuff. And this series will stop once we've got a bare engine on the stands because then we're getting into other things like turbo fitments and stuff. And there's loads of things there which are not necessarily specific to engine building. It's just normal sort of fitment um, procedures. But we're just going to get to the point, hopefully this episode, where the engine's on a stand as a complete unit, tall engine. So rocker cover, down to sump, all assembled. So another point to note on there is that obviously with this assembly, we're using generous amounts of assembly lube. You can see all the assembly lubes coming out the side of the bearings as we rotate in the engine. So again, this is the final assembly. So all your bores, assembly lube, your bearings, lube it up. So it's all nice and lubricated for the first start. So on this engine, our last cap has a silicon seal on it. So you can see these grooves in the side here. You need to be sure you've removed all the old silicon. You've cleaned these surfaces as good as you can. Um, and also inside the block, clean out all the old silicon and remove it from the uh, from the block. Uh, what you're going to do is run a bead of silicon down this groove. Now, this surface here is sealed by the sump gasket, and this surface here should be a um, complete flush fitting against the block. So a bit of silicon may get in there, but ideally you don't want to get silicon in here in your bearings because you're going to raise your bearing up. Um, the bead thickness is the width of this channel here. You don't need to cover all this surface in silicon when you when you put this in and torque it down. The silicon is going to spread anyway. Um, so we need to get a suitable see, uh, sealant. The silicon, this one is good for, for use with oil. And then we're going to go along here on each side, place the uh, cap down, and then put the bolts in and then do our torque procedure of the, of the crank. Right, so we've got our bead and our cap. Just gonna install the cap down like this. And you'll see the excess will get wiped off by the block. Like so, get into position. And remove the excess that comes up. Get your bolts. Your bolts in nice and lightly, starting by hand, just gently wind them down, nice and light on that. And then just wind the cap down. And then what you need to do is remove the excess silicon from this surface here, because again, this surface is going to be sealed with the uh, sump gaskets. It needs to be a flat, clean surface. So we'll torque this down as part of our torque sequence, torque our rods, and then we'll come back and uh, start putting some bits on the engine.
So it's also worth noticing we've now got our new bolts in here. So as we follow the uh, tightening sequence this time, we are going to use the new uh, main cap bolts. So we can uh, torque these up. Right. Once they're torqued, we'll uh, put some Tipex on them again. And then we will do the angle sequence after this using our Tipex and our angle gauge just to confirm we've done it. So again, because when you can use a torque wrench, you can go over your bolts again. You can go, yep, yeah, I torqued that one. Yep, yeah, I torqued that one. And you can spiral around them all over again just to make sure you definitely didn't miss one. But obviously with an angle gauge, if you move it, you can't just quickly check it again because you don't know how far you moved it. So using the Tipex trick is a good way of um, good way of uh, double checking because so you can see visually see if all the Tipex has moved in the same direction, all of them. So with everything torqued down, just going to check our engine for smoothness again, and it should be nice and easy just to turn the engine over. There should be no resistance, no binding, no sort of points where you have to push hard to make the engine continue to move, it should just be smooth, repeated movements. And if you can do a longer single movement in one go and just make sure it feels nice and uh, smooth. If you've got anything weird happening here, stop and go back over your work just to make sure you haven't done something strange. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set our pistons in a recessed position and what that means is we're going to set piston number one just before TDC so that's TDC, so we back out a little bit, just to there. And the reason is when we start putting a head on, there's no risk of us getting valve contact by having the cams put in, the valves pushing down, the piston being at the top, and we try and move our valves and cams around to try and align them. So it's going to leave it in a recessed position for now. So we come to do our cam belt later on and put a head on. We don't have to worry about the risks of turning our cams in the right position, because that way when our cams are in the right position, we can then bring the pistons up to meet them then we put a cam belt on later. First of all, we need to install our oil pump because before we can install our girdle and all our uh, oil pickup, the oil pickup goes to the oil pump. So the oil pump sits on the end of the engine here on the end of the crank. Uh, in this case, we have a gasket we've installed, so you need to clean your surface, clean off your oil pump, or get a new oil pump ideally. This customer hasn't opted for a new oil pump, but it's highly recommended while you're here, put a new oil pump on it. Uh, install your gasket or your sealant. Ensure you can work out what angle your crank's at because the oil pump has to go onto this notch here on the crank. Rotate your oil pump so it's roughly the right place and slide it onto the crank and you'll see there's some alignment dowels here to help you position the oil pump. Once that's on, put your bolts in to hold the oil pump and then we can move on to the girdle and the oil pickup. So there's several bits to put on now. We've got the crank girdle which ties all the uh, main caps to the block keeping rigid. There's a windage tray and there's also the oil pickup. Now, some of these bolts go through more than one layer and some bolts just don't. So you might need to spend a bit of time positioning things just to get yourself into where everything goes. For example, this thing goes one way around. Make sure you know where all the bolt holes are, work out which bolt holes are on the first layer, which bolts you need to leave out of the second layer. And in this case, there's a few bolts that need to go out to the third layer. So just get a visual of what you need to put in first. Make sure you've got all the bolts you need uh, additionally, there's lots of seals and stuff in this engine, so you need to take this seal off and put the new one in from your gasket kit in there. So I've got a nice new seal here. So change all your seals as you go. Um, this stuff looks a bit grubby. It's actually been uh, dipped and soaked for 24 hours, and it, it's just leftover oil residue. So we've washed all the, the like loose dirt off it. You know, we're not too worried about staining from oil. We're more worried about any dirt in the engine. So. Make sure you wash things, but don't get too worried about the oil stain. I mean, if we left this for a couple of hours, it would have been fine and probably still be tinted orange or orangey brown all over. So I'm not too worried about that. But we know where we need to put our bolts now. Make sure we get our bolts, change the seal, put our oil pickup on, and then we can get the sump gaskets on. Okay, so our uh, internals are now complete. We've got all our windage tray, girdle, and oil pickup on there. We've got a new seal in there. Make sure you've gone through all your bolts, make sure you've not missed one, make sure they're all in the right place. You've talked them to spec, just take your time and go over everything. Uh, the next thing is to put the sump on. Now this particular engine just uses a gasket. You do see some people use silicon on these gaskets sometimes if they're struggling to get them to seal. 
officially you should just be able to make sure these surfaces are flat and clean make sure your sump is uh, flat and clean as well and then just use the gasket only uh, these engines over here for example don't really use gaskets they use sealant everywhere so all these surfaces just get covered in sealant and then the sump's pressed on if you haven't cleaned your surfaces yet you probably should do it before you put the uh, oil pump and engine together but if you just need to do that what you can do is get a little blade in a little hole like this and at an angle just gently rub over the surface and that will pick up on any, any the old silicon on there or any of the old gaskets um, that's one way of doing it. Other ways use a very very fine like a wet and dry sandpaper um, but obviously do whatever your engine recommends. So once your surfaces are all clean and flat get your gaskets out position them make sure they line up properly on all the holes um, but to pay attention to orientation for example this gasket can almost go on upside down but not quite there's differences in here in the shapes and the bolt holes are slightly different so just make sure everything lined up just take your time every time you put a gasket on just to make sure you got right around it's very easy to put some of them on the wrong way around get half his route installing it and go ah it won't fit so got your gasket get our sump and put our sump on one thing to note with sumps is you will find that many engines have bolts inside the engine as well as outside the engine so when you're putting your sump on make sure you get all your bolts on your outside but also don't forget the ones on the inside this particular engine there's three extra bolts that go on the inside of the engine additionally there's some different length ones that go all the way through here into the engine this way so have a good look around and make sure you don't miss any bolts out there's usually some hidden ones somewhere so similar to the upper sump we now have the lower sump the oil level sensor needs to be bolted into the lower sump and you need to make sure you put the wiring through your gasket before you uh, try and bolt it down or try and put the uh, sensor into the sump otherwise you don't put your gasket on so gasket on first bolt your sensor in all right so there's the bottom sump of our uh, engine on so similar process make sure we have nice clean surfaces put a gasket in bolt it down talk it spec so now it's nearly time to turn the engine over and put the head on so just to reiterate, uh, we are setting our pistons in a recessed position. So the crank is just ever so slightly behind where it would be when it comes to TDC. So we've got like a 30 degree angle or so to turn the crank to bring the pistons up. And again, the reason for this is just so we can freely rotate our cams around, open the valves and close the valves as much as we need without having to worry about any piston contact. Once we've got the head on and the cams are in position, we can lock the cams using a cam locking tool. And then we can obviously bring the pistons up to the top to... Uh, align our cam belt so make sure you clean everything off again make sure your head gasket's all clean make sure you've got your alignment dowels if you don't have these two dowels in you will find your head gasket can move ever so slightly out of position and you will not get a good seal and you'll have head gasket failure uh, once everything's all ready to go you can lift your cylinder head onto this and we can start bolting the cylinder head down right so pop the head on and our uh, head bolts are all in at hand tight now, some things to note with torque on head bolts again, uh, like the main bolts and uh, rod bolts and so on we talked about in previous episodes, if you're using non-standard bolts, such as an ARP stud or something like that, then the torque sequences, or sorry, the torque settings will be different. There'll still be a tightening sequence, so just like the other bolts, you still have to go in a certain order. And in these uh, standard head bolts, there's actually four steps you go through. A torque and then three sets of 90 degrees in the final uh, 15 degrees from brightly but I will check on the sheet in a minute um, so be very aware obviously the torque specs are different for different fasteners now in this particular engine's case there is an ARP kit that fits but the ARP 2000 head studs of the standard size are not suitable for boosted applications they're actually more suited to the old C20XE engine so you could uh, stud your C20XE race engine for example now that's an NA engine. It doesn't have the same cylinder pressures or boost levels that uh, a turbo version of this engine does. Now we found if you put ARP uh, bolts in there, or studs shall I say, it will lift the head. In this particular engine, the standard head bolts are more than adequate. Um, and we've had no real issue with the standard head bolts even at 500 horsepower. If you are exceeding the cylinder pressures that even the, these head bolts can take, your option is to get a custom made set of studs of a different material and probably larger uh, diameters like an M12 rather than an M10 or a quarter inch or something like that made of a suitable material such as like an L19 stud. Now that will set you back probably five, six, seven hundred pounds for a set of 10 studs for a one-off kit. So it's very important to think about the applications engine is going to be in just before you decide what bolts or studs you're going to use. 
um, again, ARP 2000s and M10s, don't even think about on this engine, just use the standard head bolts unless you're looking for more than 500 horsepower. So the first round of torquing's done. Um, now, because these require quite a lot of angles, it's probably a good idea to use my Tipex trick and mark all your bolts to make sure you don't miss one. Um, and also because your engine stand, if it's not secured properly, or you haven't got a second person to help hold the engine, by the time you get to the third and fourth rounds of uh, angles in this, it's very easy for your engine stand to move and you to slip and lose track of your angle gauge. So it's recommended if you can lock your engine stand in position by chocking it up against something or having a second person hold the engine stand, that would be a great help. Um, another point to make out as well, obviously, the torque settings that you have for your head studs or bolts, again, just like the bottom end, may have a lubricant required for that setting and also using a different type of lubricant may well invalidate that torque setting so again a molly setting is different from an engine oil setting for like studs for example so just take your time make sure you get the right procedure the right stuff the right lube and make sure you mark out your bolts and you go through the procedure because the last thing you want to do is miss a bolt out or not torque it properly and have a head gasket failure later so uh, just be careful and take your time right so the head's torqued down it's time to install a seal on the end of the oil pump this is a similar procedure for doing the rear main as well, but obviously the rear main can't be done while we're on the engine stand. So we've got a seal like so to install on the end of the oil pump here. Uh, there's a little spring on the inside of it there. And it's very important when you're putting this seal in to make sure that spring does not dislocate. And one of the easiest ways to do it is to have the oil seal lined up on your pump. And if you've got your old seal, you place your old seal over the top and then using a socket, inside the old seal you can then tap the new uh, seal in now this can be a pain to do and obviously if it doesn't go in straight it might pop in one side you'll hit it and it'll pop out the other side you might just have to spend some time playing with it also you need to be very sure that this spring doesn't dislocate and pop out because if that spring comes out when you're putting it over this part of the crank then the seal will never work and uh, it's an absolute pain because you can't see from the outside that's happened but if you've got any sort of suspicion stop pull it off realign and go again you might take a few attempts to get the seal in right so our seals in it was particularly tight to get this one in just to get it hooked over the crank here it was a bit of a pain so um you notice if you started pressing it in on one side that you get a lip of the inside of the seal over the crank here and if you were to continue just to push it on the spring would have come off so what you had to do is almost get a very blunt um tiny screwdriver and just persuade the last little bits over the crank to ensure that the spring wouldn't have popped off and you wouldn't have pushed the seal too far on on one side and not enough on the other side so you just start to slide it over just hook it from either side over with a little screwdriver again a blunt screwdriver not a pick be very careful not to be and puncturing the seal or doing any damage to it and then once it was uh, mostly on use the old seal over the top your socket and your mallet and just tap it in make sure it's nice and flush where it's supposed to sit so before our crank pulley goes on we need to put the uh, rear part of the timing belt cover on the engine You'll find that there's lots of bits for an engine that needs to go on in a specific order and if you forget a bit you could easily bend you know a couple hours of your life taking it apart putting it back together again before you actually get anywhere so if you've got a uh, workshop manual that will help you a lot if not pay attention to things as you take them apart and put, try and keep things in an order or lay things out or make notes to remind yourself what to do in what order for example if you put this on before I'm sorry, if you put the engine mount on before this, you could have put the time belt on, you could put the pulley on, you could have the entire engine timed up and then realised you hadn't put the cover on. So there's lots of bits that have specific order. So this goes on first, you've got the engine mount, you've got the crank pulley, you've got all the timing gear, and then you've got the auxiliary timing gear, or auxiliary belt drive gear, whatever you want to call it, um, and various of the bits you need to do beforehand. Um, also, there's lots of odd little bolts, like these two little bolts here that go through the timing cover into the uh, oil pump and the block. They um, have a weird little uh, torx bit with a thread in the middle, so another bolt goes on top to hold the outside cover. They are different, they don't go in like, you know, you put that one in that one and that one in that one, one will stick out and will be re recessed in. So there's lots of little oddities you'll find when you're starting to put an engine together that, you know, there's one specific bolt that goes in a specific place. So uh, make sure you're paying attention to these things as you assemble your engine. Um, try and get a workshop mail to help you, and if not, just pay close attention when you're taking your engine apart where everything went. So another thing to pay attention on this engine, that there's several components to the uh, crank pulley. So before you put your crank pulley on, there's a ring that has to go on the crank first. Make sure it goes on there. If you don't do that, your pulley 
when you put your pulley on will be too close to the uh, engine, it will rub on the engine. So that spaces this out. Most importantly though is your Woodruff key. Now this is a tiny little bit of metal like this. And what this does is it goes into a little slot, as you can just see inside the pulley there. And it stops the pulley from moving out of alignment with the crank. Because you want your pulley, when it's at zero degrees, to be your, your crank zero degrees. Now, there's a problem with these engines where the Woodruff keys wear. And so, if you insert your Woodruff key and it doesn't sit there tight, you've got a problem. If you can wibble it from side to side inside the gap, then you might find that your crank is worn. Now this is something to be aware of on these engines before you actually get as far as building it because if you've already got a worn wood Woodruff key, just get a new crank. It is possible to bolt your uh, pulley up in time and to torque it into this place and it'll all be fine. And then suddenly six months later you start and get cam sensor, uh, cam sensor position codes. And you'll spend all your life retiming your engine, checking your cam sensors, everything, replacing everything. But what's actually happened is the gap inside the engine here on the crank has worn open. If that wears open, your Woodruff key won't sit flush where it's supposed to sit, like so. It'll actually wobble from side to side. And if that Woodruff key can wobble, your crank can move out of the timing uh, with your cams because your pulley can move around like so, side to side. So beware of this. Um, once you put your pulley on, there's again another big chunky washer and a bolt. Now, the torque setting on this is really high, and it's important that you torque this down, but you will not be able to do it on the engine stand. Uh, very easily unless you've got a way of locking the crank at the other end. So normally what I will do is I will install the flywheel with the flywheel bolts and I'll install the crank pulley and then I'll have someone on the other end of the flywheel to jam the flywheel with me while I torque up the bolt. So it won't be done tonight, it'll be done um, probably tomorrow. But it's really important that you torque this pulley down tightly to stop any play and risk of this Woodruff key wearing or the crank pulley moving on the crank because that will ruin your day. So that's our pulley installed. Now, because we've left our pistons in the recessed position, we don't want to tighten this up now because we'll move our crank. So I'm going to leave this hanging out so it's obvious that it's not done up. The last thing I'm going to do is put it all the way in so it looks done up, and then tomorrow you forget about it and don't do it up to torque spec. Because again, if, you're, if your pulley becomes loose and your pulley can start to rattle on the crank, you know, move side to side, you're going to have problems. So I'm going to leave that bolt so it's hanging out, obviously untorqued, to remind me to do it. Right, we have to leave it there. I uh, seem to have sold one of the um, cam seals out of my last head gasket set, so I need to order a few more head gasket kits. Um, so I've only got one new seal, so before we put the cams in, I have to get order another seal in for tomorrow, and then I can carry on the next video to put the uh, cams on the cam cats. Um, what I've done is I just put some oil over the lifters, I popped the cams in, and I got the seals ready to put on there, and I only had one, so uh, unfortunately I'm gonna have to leave it there um, for, for this video, but we'll carry on the next one but definitely good progress.